Today we're gonna to be talking about this. This is the Ronin S3. We're gonna be talking about it from a real estate video perspective only. That's the type of work I do, so that's what I'm most interested in. How smooth can this gimbal be walking through a house? Well, spoiler, it's pretty fucking smooth. But if you don't wanna you know, watch the entire video, I'll leave some timestamps down below where you can see some samples of the work that I've done with very, very minimal post stabilization done to the video. All right, let's get started. What's good everybody, Ken here, you're watching Original Dobo. In today's video, we're talking about the RS3. So I'm gonna share the settings that I'm using for the RS3, along with my overall experience and the different payloads that I am running on this particular gimbal. So I've been using this for the past three weeks. I did purchase this myself. I am coming from the RS2, which the RS2 has been a fantastic gimbal for the past, I don't know, two years or so that I've been using it, I felt like it's been pretty adequate. However, recently I made some changes to that gimbal that have just made it really super cumbersome to work with. And to show you what I mean, let me go ahead and grab the gimbal. So this is my RS2 and you can see it is not a small unit by any stretch of the imagination. That's what she said, but um, it, it does work pretty well and it does make for some super stable footage, but because I put it in this sort of ring, um, I just really feel that I've made it a lot more cumbersome than it needed to be. Now that's not a problem with the gimbal, this is the problem of the operator, but because I did this, I don't find myself using this as often as, as I want it to. So when the Ronin S3 was announced, I jumped at the opportunity to purchase it. So the Ronin S3 has a very familiar look. It's honestly, if I didn't tell you this was the Ronin S3, you probably wouldn't know unless if you used the Ronin S2 for any extenuated period of time. It looks very, very similar to that of the Ronin S2 and so much so that it even uses the same base battery. So if you have a Ronin S2 and you buy the Ronin S3, you'll be happy to know that uh, the batteries are you know, unilateral. They work from either or. So that's, a, that's pretty good. Thank you, DJI, for doing that because when I had the Ronin S1, didn't work with the S2, so that sort of sucked. But now these work back and forth, so they're cross-compatible, which I think is pretty fantastic. The screen on the front is slightly bigger, which is handy. I do like that. I like a little bit larger of a screen. Makes it easier to do things without having to grab my phone, so I can appreciate that. And then one of the primary reasons why I purchased this is because with the Ronin S2, I would constantly accidentally change the modes as I was using the gimbal, and it got to be really super annoying. But with the S3, they have a toggle slider where I can go between FPV, pan follow, pan tilt follow, and mostly for real estate, I find myself in the pan follow mode. So I just leave it there all the time. And because it's a dedicated switch, I'm not accidentally selecting it as I'm using the gimbal because sometimes my hand would actually hit the mode button and it would make a change as I was using it and it would totally ruin a shot. So now with that dedicated slider, things are just a lot easier. So overall, the gimbal has been pretty fantastic. The payload that I'm carrying on this particular rig is the FX3. This is my primary use case for real estate is the Sony FX3 with either uh, uh, yeah, 70 to uh, 180 for some detail shots, some crazy depth of field detail shots. Sometimes I use the 28 to 75 millimeter Tamron, but mostly I'm flying this, which is a 14 millimeter Sony F1.8. And um, it, this thing can obviously handle it perfectly. So let me go ahead and rig up the gimbal to talk about this auto lock situation and whether or not that I found any hindrance in that and whether or not it's actually worth it. So let me go ahead and put this all together and I'll show you how it is on the gimbal itself. Yeah. 
Alrighty, so now I have the camera on the gimbal. I'm gonna go ahead and just power it on. And you probably heard it. There's like this clicking, grinding sound as it starts up, and that is the gimbal actually unlocking. And uh, honestly, at first, when I first saw these locks, I was thinking to myself like, man, this is just one more thing to break, or if I wanna balance something, how will I balance it and you know unlock it? And honestly, these locks, you can lock any one of these axes at any point. It doesn't matter that they auto unlock. They engage and disengage just as easily as you would imagine. Um, it's, it is really handy. I mean, until you have it on a gimbal, you really don't know how handy it actually is. So if take for instance this, I want to swap my lens from this 14 millimeter to this massive 70 to 180. I just simply tap the double tap button. Now it locks it. So now all I have to do is simply and easily take this off of here. Take my 70 to 180, which is a fucking huge lens. Um, and now obviously I have to rebalance it, unlock it because you can see it's tilting forward like crazy and then balance out the gimbal. So just about here. And then I can just go ahead and unlock everything. And now we're basically ready to go. And you can see like with my old gimbal, my old RS2, this thing would be freaking out. It would be vibrating with a heavy lens like this, like a very awkward lens, but it's not. And I have it set to the medium settings. Um, and again, that works perfect, which I would have never dreamed to put a 70 to 180 on the RS3, which is crazy. But this is sort of typically how I use it. I just sort of use it for my detail shots. And surprisingly, even at such a long focal length, it's very smooth. I just, it's, it's super smooth. Um, and like I said, that's with me obviously walking carefully, but um, it works great. So again, once again, just double tap, it locks it in place. And now I can take this lens back off. And then just unlock the front piece, rebalance again, which you know, if you're smart, you're doing, you're putting markers, turn it back on and you're good to go. So if you're somebody who's doing real estate and you're swapping lenses, like you should be to add that special dynamic to your shoots, this is absolutely a game changing feature. And at first I didn't, I honestly didn't really think of it, but just double tap, switch your lens, push off the balance and you're good to go. So it makes obviously doing lens swaps a lot easier than they were before. Also in transport, I find that having these auto locks, they work really well. Um, just when I'm done shooting, just turn the gimbal off and it basically locks and it stows itself sort of in a ready position for me to lay it down in the back seat of my truck. So that's how it goes. I don't put this in a case. I don't, I don't really believe in cases, even though that's probably the right way to store your gear. But when I'm done with it, it goes in the back seat of my truck. When I bring it back to the studio, it's typically sitting in a, a case, like not a case, but a, uh, a shelf canister cage with all my gear so it's ready to go when I need it at a moment's notice. So the auto locking is cool. Now, how long that auto locking actually works for and if it's going to break down over a period of time, that will be the question. Thus far, it hasn't caused me any problems and it works flawlessly. Now, I have been looking through the application to find a way to turn that off if you don't want to use it. And unfortunately, I haven't found a way to turn that off as of yet. I could be missing something, but at least in the most recent firmware updates and the most recent application, I haven't found it. Again, if you know where it is, let me know down below because it would be a good idea to know where it is so I can turn that off in case I don't want it to auto lock each time. All right, let's talk about how I rig this uh, gimbal out for everyday use when it comes to real estate. So this is the pro version. So the pro version actually came with an extra handle. So this is the handle that the pro version came with. And um, you can see I have a V mount adapter on here and I'll explain why I have that V mount adapter on here in just a moment. So this handle sort of mounts right here. And this, again, if you buy the pro version, you're going to get this handle inside. Um, so sort of handy and I'm just going to lock this into place right, right about here. So once you start cranking down on that, that locks it into place, nice and firm. Perfect. So I have a V mount here and the reason why I position this here is because it keeps it sort of balanced. And then what I do is I take my Ninja Atomos 
and I put my Ninja Atomos here on top. And that way I don't have a big sort of Sony MPF battery on the back side of this. And then what I further do is then I just plug it in and it's completely out of way of the gimbal itself. And um, what I found is these V-mount batteries and the Ninja Atomos, I can really almost last a full day. I have so many different V-mount batteries and then when I wanna swap the V-mount battery out, I just take it off, clip it back into place, plug into DTAP and I'm good to go. So, and this is great if you wanna power other accessories as well. Works wonders. Also, HDMI cable. So HDMI cables have been a bane of my existence. I finally found some great HDMI cables that are super, super thin. These cables also work with recording into the Atomos as well, but also don't hinder the operation of the gimbal. So you're still going to get super, super silky results out of the uh, Ronin. Um, any Ronin, any gimbal for that matter. So at HDMI cable, I can't stress this enough, have a really nice HDMI cable that's thin. None of those coiled HDMI cables because coiled HDMI cables always find have some sort of pullback on the gimbal itself. And at the end of the day, it ended up causing me problems and vibrations. So this is the rig that I use and you can see turned on, it's like ready to go. Love it. And that way, I get really nice results, super ninja-like maneuvers with the Ronin 3, uh, just using this handle, holding it like this, and then I'm able to also get those tilt-down shots for pull shots, which for me works absolutely awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Let me go ahead and play a recent video that I shot exclusively with the Ronin S3, the 70 to uh, 180, 70 to, or I'm sorry, 28 to 75 millimeter and the 14 millimeter on the FX3 with the uh, Ninja Atomos, this complete setup, everything I showed you, here's that video. All right, so that entire video was shot with the Ronin S3 along with the Sony FX3. Most of the shots were the 14 millimeter, but there was very, very little stabilization. There was maybe three clips that I had to stabilize, and all of those clips were with a uh, 70 to, or 28 to 70 millimeter lens. So, and it was in the bathroom near the water, and there was one other shot, I wanna say it was, not even the golf course shot where I was watching the golfers, that was just me holding it still. Um, there's one other shot that I had to put a little bit of stabilization, like 2% stabilization. So even 2% is like almost nothing in terms of uh, you know digital stabilization, which I think is fantastic. So I'm gonna go over the settings. And a lot of times when 
I would have these Ronin gimbals. I would mess with dead band. I would mess with all these things to try to get it to act as smooth as possible. But what I will tell you is with the new algorithm on the Ronin S3, I've had to do a lot less fiddling and all I have to do is use it. So for all these videos that I've done recently with this gimbal, here's my user profile. So I am in the pan follow mode, so which is just pan follow, not pan tilt follow. You don't want that if you're in real estate because you can't control your verticals. For my follow speed, I have it set to slow. For my dead band, I set it to medium, and then I just put the push pan mode on so I can push and pan it whatever direction I want if I needed to. Um, and then the only other thing is for the motion, um, you will want to control your speed. And honestly, my max speed, um, I probably can set my control down a little bit lower, probably like 20 or so. I've had it set at thir or 30 and I felt like it was a little bit too fast. Um, but this is just for the little toggle wheel so you can control the up and down motions of the gimbal. And you can see here, um, this is just going to control how fast or how slow it goes. And I think 20 is a good speed because when I am... In post, I'm also slowing this down because I'm filming at 4K 60, so I'm slowing it down to 24 frames. So that gives me a little bit of wiggle room. So if I feel like it's too slow, I don't have to speed the footage up. So um, I think 20 will work fine for this. But yeah, overall, super impressed. I can definitely tell you with the uh, Ronin S2, my settings are very, very different. Um, they do not mirror this. I wouldn't be able to use any sort of presets for this gimbal, but like I said, I mean, I feel like the shots were really smooth and I was really impressed the first two times of using this, watching the footage back and seeing how smooth it is. So if you ask me, it's an incremental update as far as the design goes, but sometimes that's okay. You don't have to have this massive update in order for a gimbal to be much improved. Sometimes it's nice to have a familiar design but something that works really well. And I think the, the big factor here is that they've improved the motors and they've improved the algorithm and the process and power that this gimbal has to make it operate a lot more seamlessly and a lot more uh, smooth. I, there's really no other way to put it. So definitely giving it a stamp of approval. This is my new gimbal rig when it comes to real estate videos and shoots. I was using a slider. I was lugging this around. So I would lug around my Zeepin slider for a lot of shots, a lot of detail shots, but since getting this gimbal, I haven't had to. Now there's nothing that's going to prevent that sort of up and down movement, but having this little handle in the backside of the gimbal has helped me with those up and down movements. So if you ask me, very, very impressed with the Ronin S3 and uh, highly recommend it. If you guys enjoyed this style of uh, talking headshot video with some minimal overlays, let me know in the comments section down below. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Links for all the gear that I talked about here and just my real estate kit is in the description. Stay original. I'll see you next time.